welcome back f period all right that's right so if you are currently watching this flip right now and you are not in my f period you are in the wrong spot so because of the crazy like schedule that we have coming up over the next few days f period is going to end up having one extra flip than everybody else but it's all good and here's a big catch as well all everybody out there if you feel like you're missing something on the Black Death, then feel free to watch this flip again as well. But this is going to be all about Black Death, right? So anyway, in class, we got up to the fact that like the we talked about like viruses and bacteria and how they infect you differently. But the big thing we need to remember is that the plague virus Yersinia or excuse me, the plague bacteria Yersinia pestis has been around for a long time, right? It still kind of exists. And uh, it's a bacteria, it's not a virus. That's why it can attack your body so aggressively, whereas viruses, usually your body can take out over a certain amount of time, right? So now, by 1300, though, Europeans were farming almost all the land they could get their hands on. They now had to plow in the mill, so farming became much more easy and like better, more efficient, right? You got more people living in cities and towns that have no plumbing whatsoever and no way to dispose of dead bodies and no ways to dispose of waste. And like, so the cities are ripe for the plague because they're so gross. And then also Europe is ripe for the plague because there's now more like going to be a famine that breaks out in about 1315. So by 1300, Europeans are farming almost all the land they can get their hands on, right? So because there was an inter, there was about an area where everything was much warmer, right? So there was a medieval warm period, actually, when Vikings, like, set up, like, a settlements on Greenland, and uh, Iceland was still one of the most beautiful areas in the world. But then around 1300, after population began to spike and the high Middle Ages fruits of their labor was actually being achieved, the climate's going to shift, right? So <clears throat> Europe had three straight years of crop failure, right? So because of excessive rain due to this little thing called a mini ice age, right? The mini ice age lasted from about 1300 to about 1900, actually, where like, like temperatures were unusually cold, right? So, and then this excessive rain is gonna kill a lot of these crops. It's gonna destroy a lot of like different, um, like access to like food. And all, as many as 15% of peasants in a lot of different English villages are gonna die. And one consequence of starvation and poverty is that your body is now much more susceptible to disease, right? So around 1315 to 1317, this famine broke out, leading to more people dying off and also leading to people getting being easier for them to get sick. So we have three huge reasons why the plague is going to break out in Europe. One is a famine. Two is a, oops, sorry. One is a famine. Two is because the disgusting conditions of the cities. And three, the overcrowding of the cities caused by the plow and the mill, right? So these three things, these factors you need to know. You can just put like a famine, overcrowding, disgusting cities, right? You can say those three things. That's why the plague would spread so quickly, right? So then just, oh, Europe just wasn't ready. All right, so the plague we believe originated in China. We believe that the bacteria was just kind of popped up again in China, right? After hundreds of years of dormancy. Because write this down really, really quick. The plague had actually popped up at one point in history already. It was called the Plague of Justinian, right? In about 500 AD, circa 500 AD in the Byzantine Empire, the plague actually came up at one point. But the Byzantine Empire wasn't overcrowded. They had plumbing, they had sanitation systems. So they were able to like kind of knock it out the best they possibly could. Then it pops back up again about a thousand years later in China. It's then going to reach Europe by 1347 because of merchant ships. Kind of underline merchant, sh merchant ships real quick. Because here's the big thing about the plague. Traders and trading was kind of the big reason why the plague went so big all of a sudden. They're like the job that spread the plague around, right? Because here's the thing. The plague was in the f blood of rats, right? And there are rats all over these boats, and these rats happen to have fleas. These fleas bite those rats, transmit that blood, and then give it to other people, right? So by 1347, it's going to make landfall in Sicily. And by 1347 to 1348, southern Europe gets infected with the plague. And then by 1349 to 1350, 
all of Central Europe and the British Isles fall subject to the plague. Some of you are probably looking at this little area right here, Kievan Rus, and you're like, how come they didn't get the plague? Because the Kievan Russians were actually very, very smart, and they were like, they built a giant wall around their city, and they were just like, no, don't come here. We know that everybody's getting sick. Don't touch us. Don't come here. Right? So, like, and it's actually super, super funny that that happened. Now, anyway, so, really quick, though, we believe that there's this little city right over here is the actual reason why the plague kind of broke out in all of Europe. It's a city called Kaffa, right? So, Kaffa, K-A-F-A. It's a city, like, right towards the uh, edge of the Byzantine Empire, that was under attack by these people known as the Mongols, right? So the Mongolians had heard that there was this plague virus that was breaking out all over China, and the Mongolians decided to use the plague as a weapon, right? So the big thing about it is they knew how to use the bubonic plague, right? So the Mongolians started taking these dead plague bodies, wrapping them in cotton and linen, covering their faces so they don't get it, and then they would catapult these bodies over the walls into other cities, and we believe the city of Kaffa was actually attacked that way, and then someone in that city got the plague and then got on a boat, and then that boat sailed to Sicily in 1347, and then patient zero infects all of Europe in 1347. But here's the other thing, too. It's not just as simple as saying the plague is hitting us, right? Because remember, the plague is a bacteria, right? The plague being a bacteria is a very important thing to understand because bacteria spreads in a multitude of different ways, right? You have the bubonic plague, the pneumonic plague, and the septicemic plague, right? So the bubonic plague is spread by infected fleas, right? A flea would bite a rat, it sucks some of that blood up into their mouth, they then go off and bite you, and they go bleh, and then they actually throw up that plague, like, bacteria into your body, right? So because fleas, mosquitoes, parasitic animals always have to regurgitate to get a chemical that's in their saliva that works as an anticoagulant inside of your blood to keep it from clotting, right? So when they do that, they just shot the bacteria into your body as well, and then you got infected with the bubonic plague. You could also get the bubonic plague from handling dead animals that had the plague, getting scratches or bites from like plague-ridden rats, right? Because if they had like a cut or a lesion in their mouth and they bit you, you could get it that way because the plague bacteria lives in blood, all right? It lives inside of blood. So the pneumonic plague you would actually get from inhaling droplets of blood. Some of you are like, How, why is there blood in the air? Because people that have the plague bacteria, particularly the pneumonic version of the plague, they, <coughs> they cough a lot because their insides, their lungs are starting to bleed because the bronchial tubes are inflamed, right? And so when they go, <coughs> that shoots droplets of blood out into the air and then people breathe it in, and then the bacteria infects their lungs, and that's how the pneumonic plague would spread, right? And then you have the septicemic plague, and the septicemic plague is the one that's almost 100% death mortality rate. We don't really talk about how that one gets spread as much as that once you have the septicemic form of the plague. That means that literally lesions and holes and dead tissue is appearing inside of your body, which the septicemic plague is the reason why they call it the black death, because your body would actually turn Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's mute him. Your body would actually turn black from the dying flesh. And some of y'all immediately are thinking to yourself, you're like, it can't be that bad, coughing and sneezing and whatnot. Look at this slow motion sneeze really quick. This stuff comes out of your face at 60 miles an hour, right? And look at the amount of fluid that is coming out of this sneeze, right? Imagine one person does that around 30 people. That one person has now just infected everyone with the plague. How gross is that? That's so nasty. All right, so anyway, now, but then, of course, this is like some symptoms of the plague. You end up getting like a bulbous, right? Your lymph nodes get massively infected. The necrotic tissue begins to wear away on the septicemic form of the plague. That's why it's called the black death, because parts of your body would actually turn black. Um, in the septicemic form of the plague as well, uh, your body is trying to get that infected blood out of itself. So some people would actually cry blood or their nose would bleed or it would come out their ears and stuff like that. And so, like, the plague is a very, very terrifying bacteria, right? Now, unfortunately, Europe's got overcrowded cities, no waste management, dead people all over the place, and they have no idea that small, tiny little bacteria are the things giving it to them. They think they're being punished by God and ideas like that. So as you can see, that's a bulbous because the plague also will attack your lymph nodes and cause them to swell up and fill up with like pus and disgustingness. Lancing a bulbous was actually a really common way of trying to get rid of it. Now, these though, like I said though, 
the plague caused like mass hysteria all over Europe, right? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't you be hysterical if this disease was running around? So the plague caused all this crazy mass hysteria, so much so that a lot of people began to think, oh, you know what I can do? I can bet you I can figure out a way to cure the plague with like a home remedy or some funky little goofy thing. Because everyone was so frightened and because everyone was so scared, everybody's brains kind of broke and they had no idea that this bacteria was getting them. So they thought they would try to come up with ways to cure the plague. One of the big ones, of course, is the plague doctor outfits, right? Now, some historians always argue they're like, we only have one or two documented cases of these plague doctor outfits. But still, even if it's only one or two cases, they're crazy looking, right? See the big bird costume? Doctors would actually wear these costumes, apparently, and shove herbs and spices into the end that looks like a beak. And that was so they didn't have to keep smelling the dead bodies and stuff like that. They would carry around a stick so they could actually, like, inspect someone from a distance, wear gloves and a big coat. But that's a plague doctor outfit. In Beauty and the Beast, in the live-action version, it's assumed that, like, Belle's mom dies from the plague, right? And then this guy actually shows up. Also, they believed bathing in human urine was a good way to stop the plague. They believed wearing excrement, which is poop, and like would actually also be a good way to stop the plague. They thought putting dead animals in your house was a good way to stop the plague. They thought leeching was a good way of stopping the plague, which is taking these little parasitic like snake things, putting those on your body and sucking that nasty blood out. They also thought drinking molten gold and powdered, powdered emeralds was going to work, and then they also just burning some incense. Did any of these things work? No. What you need to write down real quick is like none of these worked. People were just scared, right? So, and then what's going to end up happening though, you're going to have massive effects on Europe, right? It's going to undermine people's faith in religion. The economy is going to suffer. Your culture is going to be massively influenced, right? So really, really quick though, some attempts to stop the plague also. This is another one of those assumed cures. It's called flagellanti, all right? Sorry, flagellanti. Flagellanti is when people would actually hit themselves and like self penance, right? So these big groups of priests known as flagellants used to like walk around during the plague and they would just be like, oh, oh, and they would do chants and stuff. And then they would actually beat themselves and one another because they thought the plague was a punishment from God. And so they thought they were trying to appeal to God by hitting themselves and beating themselves so that they wouldn't get the plague because look, God, we're punishing ourselves. Don't give us the plague, right? They're actually referenced in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's actually hilarious. Medieval art is gonna wildly change as well after the plague. It's gonna become obsessed with death, right? Medieval art's gonna start like drawing skeletons. The Dance of the Dead is a very, very popular uh, medieval art form during this time period when etchings and things like that were coming back. So you can see right here, it's almost as death is having a party and they're welcoming in all of these dead people now coming to them, right, because of the plague. Then, <laughs> bring out your dead, sorry, Monty Python joke. Leeching, like I said, was a popular thing of like cure as well. Like, people are just going to continue to go nuts. This, like I showed you the picture of the woman with the bulbous on her neck, right? That that bulbous, that big infection by the plague, in the Middle Ages, they thought lancing it would actually open it up and spill all this stuff out of them, giving them a cure. Kind of like Ella brought up today, Dr. Pimple Popper videos. Imagine that, but way nastier. All right, so lancing the bulbous was a big thing as well. And then here's the big thing about it, though. Some of you are like, well, wait. If all this stuff is going on and all these people are dying and all this other crazy stuff, then how did the plague finally stop? Well, eventually people started realizing after several years and several million dead that there are certain ways to stop the plague, right? Quarantine's the biggest one. Let's isolate the infected people away from the uninfected, right? The wealthy did not die very often from the plague due to the fact that most of them moved out of the cities when everyone started to die and they moved to the countryside. So that's an effective form of quarantine when you think about it, right? When these people left the cities and moved out into rural areas right here, right, for a short amount of time, that allowed the people inside the cities where the plague was to die out. Now remember, bacteria needs blood to live and it needs a host, right? So if all these people are now dead and their bodies are being burned, which is a really, really big one as well, then they're gonna die out, right? So the plague then finally come tampered down once all those people that were infected died out. Hygiene was a big one. People started realizing, well, maybe if I like actually wash myself a little bit more often, I won't get the plague. Cleaner air was a big one as well. People began burning fires in their house more often as well. And actually, we believe one pope realized that the plague bacteria can't live in super hot areas. We believe that one of the popes would sit between two fires, and when he would anoint the sick, 
that the fires that surrounded him actually burnt the plague virus in the air and prevented him from ever getting it. Or not the virus, the bacteria, right? So travel and migration is going to slow down as well, right? Trade kind of comes to a halt during the late Middle Ages because of the Black Death. And also you're going to see massive periods of time without war, periods of peace. Even in the Hundred Years' War, people stopped doing this a little bit. So 25 to 30 million people in Europe, that's almost half of all of Europe, is going to die from this terrible disease. And then right here, 443 million people total of the worldwide population are going to die. And that's 22% of the world. We believe like almost close to one out of every three people in the world at the time that we can account for died from the plague, right? So that is crazy. 443 million people total population in the world, about 22% of them or about 100 million people all over the world are going to die from this terrible disease, right? So the death though, the Black Death, also though then instated a dramatic persecution of the Jewish people in Europe, right? A lot of the uh, <clears throat> Europeans are going to start blaming the Jewish community for the plague uh, due to the fact that a lot of the Jews didn't get the plague, right? And they didn't get it because they actually lived in small communities. Because remember when we talked about the medieval Catholic Church and how the Catholic Church only allowed the Jews to do certain jobs and they had to live in certain neighborhoods and they had to stay away from other people? You quarantine the Jews away from the disease. And so they never got it. And so, like, ironically enough, now, in the Middle Ages, now you're blaming them for giving it to you because they never got it when they had nothing to do with it, right? So they were blamed for spreading the plague by apparently putting the Black Death in wells of towns and things like that, which is, of course, another instance of anti-Semitism during the Middle Ages. And that is the Black Death. So, good stuff. I'll talk to you guys on Tuesday because of Green and White Day. I'll see you guys then. And we'll get ready for your test on Thursday. I'll see you all then. Bye.